Hello sports lovers, welcome to Med Sports TV. In today's episode on Time with the Icons, we are privileged to have the former world champion Joshua, the Grandmaster Clotty. Welcome champion. Thank you. Champion, we are privileged to have you here today and it's a pleasure. So, before we start, how has retirement treated you? I want to start from behind. How has retirement treated you? Well, uh, now, uh, I can't say um, I'm fully retired or something, but it depends. Just that the corona pushed me off a little bit. Okay. But um, I'm not willing to it. Okay. If I feel like I wanted to do it one more time, I can do it okay. because I've been training all the time. Okay. Now, let's start from where it all began. How was growing up like for Joshua, the Grandmaster? Well, a uh, very, very poor uh, family. The father, the father struggled a lot to make sure. The father struggled a lot to make sure that um, he put food on the table. Okay. I remember my father can send me to one man called Agun to go and borrow twenty Ghana from there to buy. We buy gari, um, buy a fry fish. They will put on the top in the center of the uh, room, single room. Then we all eat together. After that, we just sleep there and just sleep. So it's kind of very hard. Okay. So how many siblings do you have? I have, uh, in my father's side, I have two. Okay. Me and Imando Clotty. The footballer? Uh, in, my, in my mother's side, we are five. Okay. Okay, so growing up, you wanted to be a footballer. You had a football background. What changed your mind into boxing? Well, uh, like you said, uh, I used to play football and uh, one guy called John, he was in Bukum and he was beating everybody in boxing. So uh, the way I was looking at him every day, beating the guys and I was like, oh, I asked the coach, why is it this guy always beating the guys? I wanted to fight him. So the coach said, he's very strong, he can beat me. I said, no, no, no. So they put the gloves on me. And really the guy beat me and I threw him. Oh, so sorry. after that, I started training, training, and I beat him, and he stopped boxing. I became a boxer, and he became a car rider. <laughs> great, 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 great. So he ended his boxing career. Yeah, yeah, he ended his boxing career. Oh, okay. So talking about starting boxing, how was the amateur like in those days? Because even today they struggle. So how was it like fighting amateur? You know, our amateur days is what makes us a strong professional boxers. Okay. Like in our amateur time, I fought all the good guys, the stronger. They were there in the team before I came. Okay. I wanted to be in the national team. Okay. So I have to go through all of them and it's very tough. Every, every uh, weekend, you're fighting the top fighter. And it's like a, a, a individual championship. Not like the one that you just took the boys and just put them into the national team, okay. you see. And our time is very, very competitive to extend that uh, it really shape you. So when we turn professional, we were ready for everybody. Okay. Now it's very, very bad. Okay, I remember I quite wanted to contest for the amateur presidency. I don't know what happened, but... And now, fast forward, we went to Games for Ghana. How was it like? You went to the 1994 Commonwealth Come yeah. with um, Charles Corte, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Tijani Moro. Yeah, you know that game, right? Um, I wanted to travel the first time in my life. Okay. You know, I wanted to go to the one that we call Abruchi. Mm. So I'm so anxious to extend that I wanted to be in the team. Okay. And then the brain wanted me, the chairman, chairman. he wanted me to fight with my brother. And I told her, I can never fight with my brother. I wanted to fight with the captain, who is Tijani Moro. Yeah. And uh, he, Tijani is his favorite. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to fight with, uh, compete with Tijani. So because then uh, my brother would be very free okay. to go to the games. He don't want both of us to go to, to the, the games. games. So he was doing everything to drop me. So at the end of the day, uh, Yiti Mesa popped in and he, he told the, uh, the chairman that, let the two of them fight. The winner will go to the games. And I fought Tijani, I beat him. We went to the camp for the games to make the selection and he dropped me again. 
So the frustration was so big to a extent that finally I got the chance and they pushed me to a higher weight. And I, went, I fought for workout with in the games. So when we came back, it was really, really messed up. So I told my brother we should turn professional. Okay. So that means you did not have the chance to call to go to Olympic Games. No, 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 no. Because of that. No. Okay. So how was turning pro? How was it like? Because pro uh, amateur is uh, three rounds, but pro you can go. You can start from six rounds, eight rounds. How was the decision like turning pro? Yeah, you know that's what I told you earlier. You know our our time in amateur, mm -hmm. you always gonna fight a good fighter. Yeah. going forward so because of that it, it always shape you so when we come to profit when we went to the common games we came back we decided to think professional because we believed that we fought the best in amateur so we when had we the came, grooming yeah the grooming and you know it's like always competition yes. so when we came to professional it was tough because I remember my first fight I couldn't get an opponent so there's this guy called Sami Luchu I decided to fight him. He was weighing over 13 pounds bigger than, you. bigger than me. But I said I wanted to fight him because it was my first professional fight. Right. So the first round, I was beating him crazy. And the second round, I don't know what happened. Then after I don't know what happened, I asked my brother uh, what happened when I, when I was, when am I going to the, uh, go to the ring and fight? And my brother said, well, I, just had a, I just fought and I won. And I was like, I started crying because the guy hit me to a extent that um, we all went and hit right, but it's very long. So he landed so first. So he landed first, and I went down. I don't even know what happened. It took me three months before I realized myself that this is Joshua. Wow. The, the, after that fight, right, I don't even know if I'm talking to you. I don't even know where I am. I don't know what I do. I don't know nothing. Your professional debut. Yeah, that was my professional debut. So I was like, I lost after that fight. Like, I don't really know whether the guy put something on me. So I was so, so off in the market. Until one day I went to the beach. And uh, I think, I didn't even know that I was in the beach. But I was there, you know, and I realized that something just come out of me. And I was like, I started looking at myself like, hey, it's me, that is, that is Joshua. Hey, what am I doing here? I'm even wretched. So I ran back home and I asked my brother, what happened? I didn't know what was going on. Now I'm feeling myself. And I realized that maybe then there's something. Then uh, I think in a month's time, I had my second professional was splendid. Okay. You had your second professional fight. On your 11th professional fight, you won the national championship. How was that feeling like? Because that was the first time you were winning something major as a boxer. That time, uh, uh, it, even the title was good thing because if you won the, the national title, you're going to get rated in the Commonwealth. Yes. You're going to get rated in other places. So it's good to win the, uh, to win the title. But the thing is, the guy that I'm fighting is Marciano Kome. Kome. And the Marciano Kome father is a, a spiritual man. So they really wanted everything, do everything to beat me. If I'm in a, if I'm in, I'm in a gym, somebody will come. And I saw Marciano and the father at the cemetery. I saw Marciano father at the mortuary. So all those of things. So I, I tell everybody, you know what? Wherever you see Marciano, don't don't ever tell me. I'm just preparing myself to fight with Marciano. Whatever the jury that they doing, let's see what happens. So the day of the fight, it rains because they, they really, really do a lot of spiritual things. So it rains heavily. And uh, I think nine o'clock, the rain stopped. And now it's me and you. I really beat him so bad to a stand that the father was like, you can't even beat the boy. You can't even, uh, 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 you not match the boy. Because you know, I really prepare for the fight. Kyle Taylor was your first fight after after you got rated in the Commonwealth. You had the chance to travel to England. He was your first fight outside Africa because you had earlier fought in Ivory Coast, Benin, I think Nigeria too. Mm -hmm. So it was your first fight outside Africa. And you won that fight. Um, 
coming from a poor background going to Europe to win your first fight what message did they send down to the people back home? Well, uh, they were really, really happy. You know, if any time me and my uh, senior brother had a fight, they always know that I won the short runs because they believe in me. Yeah. They always say that Joshua is going to be a champion. You know, so when I won that fight, it was outside Ghana, yeah. outside Africa. It was so, so, so good to extend. I started looking at myself and I realized that I can be a champion in future if I still keep doing it. You see, so we started training more. We, we increased the training to extend that. They would drop me and my brother at um, Mala Junction. And we would run from Mala Junction to airport from the A1. Yes. So you see, we were, like, we were like, we wanted to do this. And I already worked for me. Fast forward, then you got your first loss was by disqualification. Watching them fight again two weeks ago, the referee deducted points from you from a head bat. And I think it was the 12th round. The 12th round. The 12th round when the referee stopped the fight. Do you feel it was a fair assessment of boxing? Or there was the referee right? No, the referee wasn't right at all because, you see, you see, uh, uh, I am not going to talk in a racist way. I was, the, the, sometimes it's very hard when you're doing this type of sports in England for you to get to the level that you wanted to. Because be. Carlos was then being tipped to fight the likes of mm -hmm. Jab Judah, whom you beat, mm -hmm. Floyd Money Mayweather, so the, mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. think they, watching it, the punch he deducted, uh, he, he disqualified you on. I don't think your head did it even landed. It wasn't at all. It wasn't. It was a clear punch. And it was, I was beating the guy to a extent that they don't even believe it. So it's like they wanted any little mistake from my side to just punish me with it. So when he even he, 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 he disqualified me, the people started throwing things in the ring because they, they couldn't believe it but you see all those things really really uh, mature my mind mature everything and uh, I move forward okay before that fight you had just fought Victor forgotten his last name Victor it was just about 40 days gap with the benefit of your experience right now would you have waited a longer while before you take that fight because it was just 40 days interval maybe you did not have enough rest or something because that fight it was really though you were dominating the point deductions made the fight a close fight mm -hmm. you see in boxing we are in sports we have a time your time always have to be used by you when you don't use the time if you get to a time you'll be zero when i had that fight it really really uh, pains to me. I came to the dressing room, I cried a lot because it wasn't the title, but it was the first loss in my career. career. And I said that I felt like it wasn't a good decision. Uh, uh, decision. So I cried a lot. By the end of the day, uh, uh, I man up to myself and I said, you know what, let me move on because it's never going to come back. We have to move on and just face the new challenges. So when they gave me the veto fight, I took it and I won to straight the whole issue. Okay. After that, you got you won fights, bouts, and became and had the chance to fight Antonio Maga Reto. Excellent first four, first four rounds. Mm -hmm. What happened? You know, the, the training camp I trained a lot for that fight because I know that I Mayweather was scared to fight him. So me taking that fight is a risk. But I trained a lot for him. So two weeks two weeks uh, to the fight in the training camp, I started feeling pains in my knuckles. So I went to the doctor and I asked the doctor, what is it? And the doctor said, it's stress fracture. The hands are too tight. I should rest the hand for a couple of days. It will be fine. 
So I rest the hand almost like five days, not throwing it. And I started doing my jogging because I'm already in the shape, shape. for fight. So I don't throw punches. So when we came to the fight, the first four rounds was good. The hands was going fast and everything was good. And the fifth round, I started feeling the pains. And any time I throw punch to hit him, I feel like the the putting knife in my heart. So I said to myself, you know what? I don't want to lose in a, this, a life, oh, yeah. in a knockout or something. So I have to just manage myself to finish the run. So that's what I did. And I finished the run. But if not, the hand that uh, came in, like, I wonder if I. So what happened? You couldn't get a rematch. What happened? They never gave me a rematch. Even look at the Kutu fight. I was supposed to get a rematch because it was a good fight. It was a, it was a split decision. Yes. I, I particularly, to be fair, after w watching the fight with no commentary, scoring it round by round, just to pray, I scored it a draw. Even even the Ghanaians that they won the fight, they bet with the Puerto Ricans. After the fight, the Puerto Ricans shared the money to the Ghanaians. They feel like I won the fight. So the score wasn't good. So they shared the money for nothing to happen. So you see, I feel like uh, that time uh, Koto and uh, Pacquiao so, signed contract to fight. fight. So they feel like I am the one. I will, I will cause a problem yeah. if I won that fight because it's a money fight. It's a money fight. You see, so they just, just like how um, Otwalen and Tyson Fury mm -hmm. with the cuts that yeah. fight should have been stopped, mm -hmm. but because Tyson Fury had signed a contract Try to fight, fight Wilder, mm -hmm. they have to let the fight finish. That is how the. Boxing. That's how uh, the boxing game. That's how we, the blacks, if you go to foreign land to fight, that's how we get. It's very hard for a, a fighter in Ghana or in Africa to go to the high level in boxing. Very tough because those people that you're gonna face before you get there, it's not easy. It's very tough. Then, after Koto, your then promoter Bobaran gave you. Mani Pacquiao. I remember you saying that you have not lost a boxing match in your heart, but you lost to Mani Pacquiao. Mm -hmm. That was how you ate the humble pie. How good was Mani Pacquiao? In you? Well, he's uh, he's very fast. He threw many many shots. Sometimes people feel like he threw many many shots. He he, ha he has a power. He has a power because mm -hmm. you know you see. People don't know it short, but those short people, they always have all their power in their hands. Mm -hmm. So when you train more to it, it becomes more powerful. So they feel like because it's short, so it's going to be a easy thing. And his power comes with speed. Yes. See, so when he's thrown down those punches and all kind of that, and you never take your time, you might just get caught because he threw many multiple punches. So from all angles. From all angles. And, he, and he, he doesn't even stay in your face. face. He always move uh, angles, sideways, you know, come back and forth. Like so it's kind of very difficult. For, but you know, I lost that fight bad. That was the fight that I lost. I felt like I lost in boxing. And I lost it bad because I'm not sure I was there in the ring. Okay. Because my manager was all about money. He never even think of me. He only think about the money that is gonna come. Who was managing us at that time? That time it was called. His name is Vincent Scopino. He's Italian American, okay. and it doesn't even come to my training grounds. The only thing is, the only time I will see him is if I have to go and do medicals for okay. fights before I see him. He doesn't pay my rent. He doesn't pay my uh, uh, prayer fare if I'm going back to, uh, from Ghana to yeah whatever. So he doesn't do nothing, and he's get, making get the three percent out of my purse. You see, so sometimes it weaks the body, it weaks the mind, it weaks the whole thing because people might say that, um, "Are you doing that sports for the money?" We always need a reward. Yes. And you always sign the reward. Boxing is business. Exactly. You you always sign the contract to make the money, 
and the, the, how the money is going to sprint, it's what will make you to fight harder or slow yourself. And he's making 33% from the pay-per-view. He doesn't really care about the pay-per-view, I am going to get it. We, we, he signed a contract that I'm getting $3 from $100 from the pay-per-view. And that $3 too, I am making the $3 from, from 300,000 buyers after. So if only 300,000 buyers bought it, then I'm not going to make nothing. So it's like he doesn't care. So I put all those things into my head yeah, and uh, it affects me in a ring. Okay. So now you are being managed by top rank. Um, your contract expired. Bob Aram did not give you a new contract. What happened? He gave me a new contract, Trust. but he wanted to drop the minimum to the lowest. I decided not to do it because Bob Aram don't want to leave me. He feel like even if I am not done, mm -hmm. he can use me to the New guys. guys, but you see, I respect myself so much when it comes to uh, my career, and I respect my body a lot. So now, when my record is 41 wins and then five losses, yes, I don't want to just go into those kind of fights $30,000 fights, for $50,000 fights, lose my dignity. No, even if I'm done with boxing. I am done with us. I'm not gonna lose to nobody. To lose maybe 15 fight, 18 fight. No, I wanted to have a, a legend uh, record. So I wanted to fight with people who have been, who have fought for world titles, mm -hmm. not people coming up. People who have fought for world yes. titles. Yes. So that you can be in final eliminators, mm -hmm. not be used as a journeyman. Journeyman. So when he wanted to give me the contract, he. He put he, he bring all the monies down. Okay. So I told the manager that I'm not gonna sign because even even though they are all minimum, mm -hmm. but I don't want it to be in the contract. So if the contract cannot remain the way it is, then I have to move on. So I move on. So you move on to star star boxing. Star boxing. Star boxing knows me. I fought with Margarito. Star boxing was there. I fought with. Uh, Koto Star Boxing was there. So as soon as we started saying that we want a new promoter, he chip him. Chip him. And he have his So how was the contract like with Star Boxing? Because we know you can't talk about the all the details, but how was it like? Because was, you went to Australia, you fought a couple of mm -hmm. fights, get uh Rosado. Mm -hmm. Rosado. Rosado. Well the contract that we signed with Star Boxing was okay. And uh, sometimes they will, they will tell you if you fight for 10 rounds, you make a $5,000. But you see, sometimes it depends on the opening, you can make more than that. But Star Boxing, you sent me to Australia in a danger zone. Yeah. I went there because the money was like uh, $80,000. I had that fight. If God willing, I won the fight. Even I, I knocked the guy uh, Mandin down five times before I won the fight. I will not win it. I came down. We were in rank number three in WBA, and we were pushed to number two. And you, I, I, I'm 154 uh, oh, fighter. And you push me to Rosado, who is 160. 160. You're some. You're you. Rosado is a full fledged medalist. Yes, even bigger than medalist. Yes. He was very. So normally tall. he can. I think he's now fighting a super medal. Super medal now. He, he, he last fought with uh, Daniel Jacobs. Daniel Jacobs. You push me there and I call you and I told, I told uh, Joe, we are in a good position to fight for a world title in 154. Even if you're going to put promote me in this your Broadway boxing. Do it for us to land in the Madrid to fight for the title. At least a final eliminator. Yes, but because he is pushing me to somebody's promotion. Yes. For promoter to give me maybe fifty thousand for him to take his cut, he didn't care. And I had that fight with uh, Rosado. No, no. It was 
when I was with, with uh, when I was fighting with Richard, the first four rounds I was winning, but he's tall. Yeah, even all he's the a coaches, big guy. Big guy. Even a big that Jan Jacobs, who is about six foot, could not even do much effect. Unlike Triple G, Triple G is a power puncher, so Triple G was able to. But yeah. Daniel Jacobs, who is six foot mm -hmm. one, even could not have much. They went twelve rounds. Yeah, when I saw him at the way, before I realized that no, this is bad fight. I didn't know him. Oh, I didn't okay. see him before. Until the way I saw the guy, the guy was so huge. So I said to myself, no, I shouldn't have taken this fight. fight. Because listen, with my height, this guy will, no matter punches I'll give to this guy, that will just put him down. And it happens. Because even when I was winning, I was foxing myself, it's not enough. Because he's too bigger than me. So after the contract, after their fight, I told her, I went to his office, I told her, listen to me, you sold me out. You're supposed to be there and fight for a world title. I can win the title because I'm good in 154. But it it's also a natural weight. My natural weight. Because I don't know what is worrying you. You you push me to a bad fight. Now we're going to lose our position. So after that, I am done with him. Okay. He's not going to help me. He's not going to help you. So then, uh, I think after that fight, so you came back and you've won a couple of fights. I think in 2019, you were semi-retired. You said if the media dare you, mm -hmm. you'd come back. You came back mm -hmm. and won a fight at Odra or something. One at the arena and then one at the Odra. You were the first former boxer to fight at. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Former Football world champion, champion to fight at mm -hmm. Bukum Boxing Arena. And then you went on. So now that, are you still retired or you are fighting? Well, uh, as for that word, well, uh, I am not really, really fully retired. Okay. And I'm not really, really full into boxing. Okay. Um, let's just make it like this, what you don't know. Okay, tell me. After the Pacquiao fight, the money that I make was maybe, let's say, for example, three million. But... It is, is it three million or let's say it's three million? Oh, let's say three million. Okay. Because the fight money and the pay-per-view money. But that money was cut into more than 50%. Yes. The promoter... Just, the promoter did not the get anything. The manager yeah. was 33. The trainer was uh, 10%. 10%. Percent. The cutman was 6%. Percent. And I paid $300,000 for tax. So, at the end of the day, the money, got, uh, uh, the money went to the right uh, place. What I made... I quickly made a fast mind and I bought houses in East Lego. Okay. I bought uh, two mansions, six bedroom with pool, and I bought another one too with pool. So I had to. That time I was buying that house. I was buying that house because I feel like um, a house I am buying. Yeah. Which is a ask a house in East Lego. Yeah. But after when, after now that I'm coming out of my career, okay. I realized that what I bought was best in life. Because now when I have other houses in Wager. So I'm That's living where you stay now. I'm living yeah. in Wager. So those houses is being rented. Yeah. Sometimes it's not about you being a celebrity or whatever they call it, or star. Don't I don't even believe in those things. Okay. What I have in life, I have a lot of things that human beings ask. What? I have um, dresses, a lot. I have shoes. I have bought shoes before $3,000, $2,500. I have bought watch $15,000 before. That time the money was coming, you see. But at the end of the day, your career, it's what will define who you are after. Now when, now when I am living a life whereby even those that they making sports now don't leave. Don't even leave. Why? Because I don't make myself a star. I don't make myself a celebrity. I live a normal life. And that normal life is generating me so much to a extent that I feel like it's even, even better than boxing. Because people did not come to me and ask me money like they used to. 
So whatever I make is mine now. You see, I will not gonna buy two thousand shoes anymore, but I can afford to buy five hundred. If I can buy a car now, fifty thousand dollars. Why I am not in boxing? Why it was my uh, house that give me that money? Then I'm living a life. Yes. It's a blessing because come on, I know many many footballers now that they suffering. I cannot mention him. He's of because you see business they make and people take advantage of yeah. them and they just squash all their business. Now when if it comes to me, people that they will pay me my rent, they will call me. Because of the corona, if they will pay, they just give me a time. It's my money. They'll give me. They'll give you. When the time comes, they'll give you. That's it. So I just give me time. They will call me. They talk to me. Even uh, lawyers, they are in my. They are. They, they made a chamber with one of my house. So you see, those houses that I bought, I bought them one million dollars. That's all the money that I used to buy those houses. And those houses are working now. So and, and let's say for that long. The rent you may be taking at a prime area like this, Legon, would be, if you calculate it now, it would be more than one million dollars. Yes. Yes. And now, when, let's assume me, I'm getting a problem. And you know, I found a business whereby it's a boom business to make it work. If I put my money there, I can always sell that one house, like six hundred thousand, seven hundred thousand, five hundred thousand dollars to do that business. You see, so I always thank all my team a lot to how it guide me to build those houses. So now I, I am okay, very very well. I'm, I'm where I live in uh, Wager is my house. I have two houses there. You see, so it, 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 it's about you. I know a couple of boxes that we all when when I was fighting, they fighting. They don't even have a single room. Because they use all the money on women. women. Now when they zero, we all we all make. I've dated many 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 many. I've dated those they call themselves celebrity, moving and whatever whatever. But I make it with wiseness to extend that I won't even cry tomorrow. See, you thank God for that. So that's the reason why I don't want to use my record to people. Because whatever I make, it's okay. I save some, it's okay. Okay. Champ, that's a wise decision. Any young upcoming, not just postman, but any upcoming person in life should listen. When you make money, invest it and enjoy the fruit. Later, great advice and smart decision for Joshua. And, but Champ, you are a family man. So now let's talk about your family. Are you, are you married? No, I never married. And uh, I'm married, okay, I'm married, divorce. Okay. Because uh, let's say, for example, I don't want to say what no, no, no. in the, in the on the TV, but I married before. Okay. Divorce, that's why I say I never married. Okay. I have two um, children. children. One is American citizen. Okay. The boy is four years now. Okay. The, the woman is is 22 years, so she's a legon. Okay. She will complete uh, school in September. Okay. So you see, I don't wait for nobody to pay my daughter's school fees and all stuff fee, okay. because I manage myself well. Okay. So you see, I have two kids. I'm not, I'm not married now. Okay. But I would love to. And one advice I would give about. Um, the marriage issue you're talking about. I wish I'm married now, or I'm in marriage. Okay. Like I'll be fine because now when the women are so spoiled to extend that, if you don't catch yours now, you're gonna gonna you're gonna have a problem in five years time. Five years time you're gonna be worst. You will never even know no. We never even see love. Now when Romeo and Juliet they died, they took love away. Now it's all about if you have money, you're gonna get what you want. Okay. If you don't have money, 
you're not gonna get what you want. There are some every man have what he likes. Okay. But because if you don't have money, you can never get what you want. You're always gonna manage a woman. And when you manage a woman in the marriage, it's a bigger, 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 bigger problem. You manage we all have, have our spec. I want my woman to be like this and like that and like that. But because I didn't work hard to make money. Now when I'm managing this woman, that is not your spec. In a marriage, it's going to affect you. But when you work hard and you have the money to marry what you want, you can in the marriage always get breakups. Okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So what? Uh, what? Uh, so besides boxing. The last time I, I met you was December 24th. Maybe you don't remember. Mm -hmm. But we met outside the Pokemon Boxing Arena for the December bout in which you had a commentary on Ace Power Promotion that yeah, you yeah, yeah. promoted. Mm -hmm. so that mm -hmm. was when mm -hmm. we met mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you talked about uh, the, the guys should train more. They are more, uh, we have potential world champions. Do you know some whom you, you can name to motivate to keep on trying? How boxing is going on now? If today I'm coming out of uh, boxing, I don't even know what to do. Reason is that they are, they, they, they are spoiled boxing. They put boxing into a bad state. Now when you can go to a fight, the whole 12 uh, fight, it's all this called Achiagish, already known results, fights. It's bad. The boys too, a young fighter who is 1-0 or 2-0, stay with a woman in a room while you're a boxer. You don't even know what you're doing. You can never go nowhere. Because when we started training, it will be, we, we, the feet is coming. The only thing that comes to our mind is sex. And you are in a room with a woman. You can always do that thing. And when you do that thing, you can never be strong to fight. So why are you even going to put your money on somebody like that? You don't even know what to do. Whether you be a coach, you be an agent, you be a manager, you don't even know. Because the state of boxing is bad. This brings me to uh, the amateurs and the likes, the Olympic Games that the young guys have, have qualified for. They are not getting support from anywhere. They are not getting support. Have you been there to give them a couple of advice? I know coach, uh, doctor, doctor is doing his best, but sometimes people like you would want to motivate them, government, they've not been getting that support. What do you think, in your humble opinion, stars like you, Asuma Nose, and especially corporate Ghana sh should do it in order for us to produce more Olympic medalists? Well, uh, what you are saying is good. I should have been there by now just to give my advice. But sometimes it's busy or not kind of that stop people. But Sometimes too, it, 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 it's not me, okay. it's the government who do the right thing. You can't camp those boys who is going to um, Olympics. Olympic Games in a place whereby it's 10 minutes to their home. Are they serious? They are not going to win no medal. I'm telling you. If they win, anybody who will win medal from Ghana, have to be held so much. That person have to be given even the bigger car. Because let's say they were camping at this uh, Kolegono beach. Yeah. And their house are uh, here. Yeah. A mm. woman can just walk there. It's very bad. It's just about if you pick car, it's just about one city fifty pesos. One city fifty pesos. The woman can go there, hide, sneak into the room, make love to the guy, go back home. That's why they go far from home. But you see, the government don't really put their mind into boxing. They don't really care about boxing. But when you win World Title or you win medal, before they put their coat on, they come and talk. That's the situation that we are in for a long time. It still never changed. Okay. 
I want to save the best for the last. I want to end with the Zabjuda, the feeling. Mm -hmm. I want to end on that high note. Okay. So, ending your career, the greatest achievement, in, in my humble opinion, I don't know about mm -hmm. it, is winning the IBF World Title against Zabjuda. Mm -hmm. For those who don't know Zabjuda, Zabjuda was a light water weight he was a unified champion exactly. he was the guy before floyd mayweather became floyd mayweather mm -hmm. he was the guy mm -hmm. he was the guy to beat mm -hmm. you destroyed him yeah that was the fight that i really wanted to win one because of the weight i did mm, putting my name into the book two he threatened me with a gun wow yeah so he threatened you with a yeah, so we had an issue, and those issues have to be settled. So when I fought the number one position, I became a Madutori. Came a Citroen, relinquished the title. So Zabjuda was number two. Yes. So Bobaro called me and said, oh, I'll fight with Zabjuda for the title. I said, yes, that's the fight I won. And he said, well, I said, because he threatened with a gun. What happened was that I had a fight in America. And uh, after the fight, they asked me who I wanted to fight. And I said, oh, I wanted to fight with Zabjuda. That time, he was undisputed uh, champion. And he got it in a different way. He, I went to gym. Uh, for this time, I went to gym. We all trained the same gym. I trained different time than me. We were in the gym, you know, he came and he was like, oh. Like, he started talking uh, I mean, in their English. You, like my Fuka, I wanted to spar with you, you know, because I said, why are you going to uh, spar with me? I want a real fight. If you think you can beat me, I know I can beat you. So tell your promoter so that we can fight. If I know spar, he said he's going to give me $2,000 uh, $2, for me to give him six rounds. I said, that is not necessary. So when we were talking, I told him, you know what, I'm here to train. So just you go. Why do I have to say, well, then he pull a gun. He started coming. So the gym uh, people came and just talked to him. So I told the promoter, I told the uh, trainer that we should leave here. Since that, I never ever go to the gym again. Okay. Okay. So when the fight came, I was so, so happy about it. And even he spoke with my brother before, Emmanuel. No, no. So he was thinking, it's me that he spoke with. So at the press, at the press conference, he said that oh, he used to beat me inspiring and as I let me tell you something it's not me it was my senior brother that you used to spar with it's not me I'm a different human being you see what I'll do to you before you realize that it's not me that I spar with so he if he knew it wasn't you he wouldn't have accepted the fight yes so he started thinking this is very tough fight I really I trained I trained a lot for that fight two things be becoming a champion for the nation and because he threatened me and everything happens. Even the referee did uh, was the referee was decision was head bat. It wasn't a head bat. The referee almost uh, took the joy away from me. But with Allah everything is possible. It was really 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 fun when I came to Ghana Everything was so. Uh, they put you me to at the uh, Godi Tulip. Then the, the next morning we went to Fro. Then the president invited me. The president gave me a car. What's that car? Oh, that's a long time car. <laughs> Small car. They gave me a car and they do all that. Even those things are not anything. But the name. Your that name I is put, now in history. The name Nobody can. The, Nobody. The name. You are among the 10 world champions mm -hmm. Ghana has produced. Mm -hmm. That is a fact. Nobody can change it any day, mm -hmm. any time. Okay, we appreciate your time so much. We appreciate it's been, we have had a little bit challenges while scheduling mm -hmm. this interview. But let me be frank, he is a man of class, very patient, very straightforward. And that's the kind of people we need in this country. Champ, thank you for joining us on Mess Boss TV. It's always, you're always welcome. Thank you so much too. So guys, stay positive. Au revoir. Bye-bye.